Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the L39C again. In this video, I want to show you how to use the RSPN navigation system as well as the PRMG landing system. So let's get started. First off, let's have a look at the different controls and devices installed on the aircraft. The device itself is called RSPN 5S or Iskara K. I guess I didn't pronounce that correctly, but uh, we'll have to do. Anyway, uh, the first switch you will have to use when employing the RSPN is this switch over here on the circuit breaker panel, which will provide power to the RSPN system. The next um, control panel we have to look at is uh, the main RSPN control panel over here, where we can select the different channels for the navigation system, the RSPN itself, as well as the PRMG landing system over here. We also can make manual inputs uh, for easement and distance and we can also adjust the volume and we also can zero out the easement which is a testing function. Also um, used with the RSPN and the PRMG is the main um, instrument, the HSI, which will uh, have the RSPN needle, which is, which is the SIN needle, let me move the other needle out of the way, which is the SIN needle and um, it has a pointer and the pointy end is pointing towards the RSPN station and the round end is pointing away from it. And also we have the curse selector in which where we can select a curse which you can also use with the RSPN similar to uh, the normal VOR navigation in uh, Western aircraft and um, the fat end is pointing is uh, selecting a curse and the thin end is the opposite end of the needle. Anyway, uh, there are two more switches uh, necessary for the RSPN to op be operated and one is the um, mode selector, I guess I would call it, where you can select between navigation mode, landing mode and glide pass mode. And we will have a look at all three modes uh, in this video. And we also have the SDU switch here and um, this enables the flight director. We will also take a look at that uh, once we get into our landing phase. Okay, now let's hop over into the mission editor where we'll use the map to make our route for this flight and we will see you in the cockpit in a second again. On the map we see that our aircraft is northwest of Krimsk, just up here in the top left corner and Krimsk itself will be our first waypoint, so we'll have a closer look at the airfield and in here we can see a black box with a point in the middle and that is the symbol for an RSBN ground station. And uh, this ground station will be our first waypoint. So we will note down the channel number. And the channel number for this one is 28, as you can see here. And I will just add a waypoint for our flight plan here. Uh, that's not really required, but I'm just doing it so you can actually see our route we are going to fly. Now, we also look at our next airfield, which will be Cresnoda Center. And again, we have the black box with the point in the middle, and it has has an RSPN station identification number or channel number of 40. So we'll note down that as well. Okay, and that will be our next waypoint. Because we will want to head to Chris Noder Center. However, Chris Noder Center is also our destination airport. And as you can see here, marked by that white triangle, which represents the glide slope, the approach pass, um, this airfield also has an PRMG landing system and we can see the identification number or the channel number for the PRMG landing system out here and the channel number is 38 so we will note down the PRMG channel number 38 as well because we will use that for our landing approach and um, that's all we need for the map so we just got the channel number 28 for Krumsk the channel number 40 for the RSPN at Chris Noda, and uh, we also got the channel number 38 for the PRMG at Chris Noda. And we will just write that on a small note, so we know where we want to head. Now let's hop back into the aircraft and actually tune in those frequencies. Okay, welcome back to the cockpit, and we are still in the air just northwest of Krimsk, and we want to navigate to Krimsk via the RSPN station we just have looked at in the map. Okay, now let's go down to the control panel here and I guess you remember 
the channel frequency or the channel number for Krimsk is 28. So we want to turn that in and um, yeah, 28 is turned in and we will see two green lights uh, showing that the azimuth and distance is getting updated by the RSB and ground station. And uh, we can see our pointer, our RSPN pointer is pointing pretty much straight ahead, which means that the ground station should be out in front. And uh, as we can see the airfield, we know it's out there. And also, an uh, instrument I didn't talk about earlier, down here, the distance indicator shows that the distance to the ground station is 26 kilometers. And as soon as I will unpause the simulation, which I did right now, we can see the distance slowly moving downwards. Currently at 25 kilometers, and it will count down. Okay, well I will add a bit of throttle, and we will head towards the distance. And the only thing I'm doing while uh, navigating towards the station is keeping the pointer just dead ahead. And um, this will do just fine. And we will eventually end over end up over the station. Okay, now I will fast forward time a bit in the video so it doesn't take too long and we will uh, be back with you or I will be back with you once we are close to the station just before we are about to pass it. Okay, we are now getting close to the station, about 8 kilometers left. And um, once we overfly the station, we will kind of end up in a bit of a dead spot because the station is not um, transmitting directly upwards. So the RSPN signal will cut out briefly. And um, after the signal cut out, or during the, basically the blind spot, we will tune in the next uh, station frequency which is the RSPN ground station number 40. Okay, now we only have about five kilometer to the ground station left. Should the dead spot should occur any moment. And um, trying to keep the altitude and speed for now. And we will start the descent once we turn towards our new destination. But we will wait for that, just a moment. Okay, now we're at uh, about three kilometers. And uh, the blind spot is quite no uh, small. But uh, another indication that um, we are overflying st uh, station right now is because the needle is turning very fast. Yeah, and uh, when the needle turns very fast, it's similar to the ADF. That means that you have overflown the station and the station is now behind you. So as the station is now behind you, uh, behind us, I guess, we will tune in the next frequency, which is uh, 38. Uh, correction, 40 for the ground station and um, 38 for the landing system, so 40 for the RSPN navigation device and 38 for the PRMG landing system. Perfect. And now, looking back up, the needle already has updated. We have to make a course correction to the left here. And we will get ourselves um, back to the point where the needle is centered again. Okay. That's about this direction, and as you can see, um, the distance on the distance readout is about uh, seven, uh, 70 or currently 69 kilometers. So a bit of uh, time to fly there. And um, that's uh, just a good point to look at uh, another nice function of the RSPN, and that is the descent mode. So um, today we're flying in fairly nice weather, no clouds in the sky. I guess perfect flying conditions. However, that's not always the case. Uh, you might have um, very low overcast, and you might have, yeah, a lot of bad weather, bad visibility, wind, rain, all that stuff. And um, you also might be flying in the mountainous terrain. And um, you want to do an approach to an airfield, and you don't 
really want to crash into a mountain, I guess. So um, the builders of or the constructors or designers of the RSPN have talked of that, and they designed the, the descent mode, uh, the descent mode or the glide pass, as it's called in this aircraft. And I will just switch to the glide pass mode, and this will change stuff a bit, because now um, the altitude indicator up here or the above below indicator moved above us because um, it now gives us a readout and um, the readout basically means uh, how if we should descend or climb and uh, I guess in this case climbing is not required we can stay level and um, if we follow this device we will not be able to crash into a mountain if we would fly in mountainous device so once it shows descent we can safely descend towards the station and uh, we should be clear of any mountainous obstructions or anything like that. So um, it will become much more clearer once we get to the phase where we have to descend. Right now the bar is above the middle, which means that we have to keep our altitude. Once we get closer to the point where we ha have to start our descent, I will tune... Oh, never mind. We will actually start our descent any second now, because as you can see, the bar starts to move down. And so I will just gently push the nose down a bit, not pushing it down too hard. And this means we will start our descent. And the descent mode, or the descent, yeah, the descent mode is basically designed that way, that we will reach at an altitude of 600 meters above ground at a distance of 20 kilometers to the airport. So um, we will just end about uh, half a kilometer above the ground when we are about 20 kilometers away from the airfield. And um, this is the perfect place to then continue with the ILS or a visual approach, depending on the weather conditions and your approach angle. Anyway, now I will just tr try to keep that uh, horizontal line centered in the circle in the middle. And yeah, that will do. And I will just play with the stick and the throttle a bit to keep our speed and uh, to keep that descent going. And um, we are now in the continuous descent mode. And if there would be bad weather and terrain, we would be fairly safe of not crashing to anything when following in this when following in this mode, which makes it perfect for bad weather and mountainous flying. And though there are not many airports uh, on this map that require those modes, but um, you have them nonetheless. Anyway, I will now fly down the glide pass. The system provides, and once we get closer to the ground and closer to our 20 kilometers distance, I will tune back and resume. Okay, now we're about 30 kilometers away from the airfield and I already have set the curse needle to a curse of about uh, 90 which represents our final approach curse because the runway has a heading of 87 degrees so 90 will just do fine in this case and uh, we're still following in the descent pass. And now a bit of a thing to notice is that we're not uh, approaching directly in the extension of the runway center line. We're a bit um, to the south of that. So we have to do a bit of a uh, left-hand turn to actually get us aligned with the runway. Because if we would just follow straight ahead towards the ground station now, we would hit the runway end with an angle, and uh, that wouldn't help us for landing. So we make a bit of a left-hand correction here. I'm only making about uh, maybe 20 degrees, a bit less than that. And uh, we can still use the descent pass, no problem there. And um, we just want to wait until um, yeah, we actually reach the end of the descent pass, which we should reach any moment now because uh, our altitude above ground is about 700 meters and our distance to the ground station is about 23 kilometers. So we should be in the perfect approach conditions any moment. And... Um, we also get a visual indication that the descent pass has ended 
by a green annunciation light lighting up any moment now. There we go, end of descent, and the, the vertical descent bar, vertical course bar goes away. Ah, uh, sorry, horizontal course bar goes away. And uh, we now want to switch over to the landing mode. Okay, and I also want to turn on the flight director by the SDU switch, and that will do. And now we want to keep our uh, current altitude and head continue on this heading until um, the flight director starts to move, and which it does currently. Currently, it means that the, uh, the flight director wants us to fly a bit to the left and to fly up. Uh, we will not fly up too much, we'll just hold this altitude. Okay, now the flight director is moving to the right, and then the flight director basically is the vertical and the horizontal bar on the attitude indicator. And we can just follow that. Okay, you want to keep both needles centered, but um, don't chase the vertical bar, uh, sorry, the horizontal bar upwards because there is no reason to climb right now. We will just wait for it to come down. Okay, now down here you can see on the HSI, you can see the vertical bar is now completely centered. And we wait for the horizontal bar to come down again. And then we will follow the horizontal and the vertical bar just as we did in the descent mode. I also want to slow down and activate the first pair of flaps. Or the first notch of flaps. A bit too fast at this point. Okay, don't reduce the RPM too much. Don't want the chain to come out. Okay. Uh, still a bit too fast for the first not true flaps, but no worries, we will get there. Ah, sorry, my joystick was interrupting that. Okay, there we go. First pair of flaps extending, or first um, not true flaps extending. And now, with the first uh, notch of flaps extended and the landing gear still retracted, we will continue downwards. And we will just follow the flight director indicator uh, indications. I don't want to descend too much. Adding a bit of throttle. Maybe a bit on the slow side right now. But we can correct for that if far enough out. Okay, perfect. Um, now the horizontal bar should come down any moment, and it just started to do so right now. And um, the flight director bar came down as well. So this is a good point to extend the landing gear, and we get the landing gear going out. Perfect. We don't want to descend too much, we will just want to follow the flight director indications. And I will also bring out the second notch of flaps. Nose coming up a bit. Correcting for that. And now just following the flight director. And um, this should end up... This br should bring us quite to the end of the runway threshold and we want to arrive at the inner marker with about 230 kilometers per hour which we have currently and this will do us just fine and um, the PRMG is not really designed to land you on the uh, runway or like it um, for example in the MiG-21 it will bring you to the runway center so um, the last hundred meters last couple of hundred meters the flight director is not too accurate anymore and I believe that's also true for the um, LZ-39 LZ-39 however it's doing quite well it just adds a bit more throttle okay dangerous altitude that's fine Auto mar uh, inner marker that's fine as well now we will start to ignore the flight director as it will not provide any sufficient or useful data right now and we will continue the approach visually there we go. Ah, floating a bit too much. Okay. There we go. Extend the speed brake. Bring up the flaps so we get more white on the wheels. We have better braking efficiency once we need them. 
and just let the aircraft run or roll out. Okay, and um, this basically concludes our RSBN navigation and PRMG landing lesson. Um, I hope it was clear enough. The system is quite uh, simple to use. Just have a look at it. And I also put um, a link into the description of a useful uh, beacon map where you can see all the ground station frequencies and all that stuff as well as a small chart which you can put into the keyboard which will show all the PRMG frequencies as well as the radio frequencies for all the different airports within DCS. Yeah, that's about all for this video. So thank you very much for watching and have a safe flight.